educate yourselves and educate others around you about why this um, language needs to be taken out of our Constitution. Tonight in focus, abolishing slavery from the Utah Constitution. While no longer enforced, there is still language that exists allowing slavery for a person convicted of a crime. ABC4 News initially brought this information to Representative Sandra Hollins two years ago. Now, Utah voters will have the ability to vote this language out on the November ballot. Representative Hollins joins us live in studio tonight. Thank you for joining us again. You've been a great partner in continuing this conversation with us. So let's start at the beginning for our viewers. Mm -hmm. My former colleague, Brittany Johnson, discovered that there was still some slavery verbiage in our state constitution when comparing it to other states. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you first saw the reference to slavery in the Utah constitution? I was quite surprised to see that it was still in our constitution when um, Brittany and I had already been talking about what was happening in Colorado and, and actually has celebrated that they were able to remove theirs out of the constitution, but it never dawned on me to look at our constitution Constitution to see if it was if that verbiage was in there and so when she called I was quite surprised to learn that it was in there can you talk about the specific references or the verbiage that still exists in our Constitution regarding slavery sure it states that slavery or involuntary servitude shall exist in this state if a person has been duly convicted of a crime so why do you think we've gone this long without anyone pointing out that slavery verbiage still exists in our state constitution? I think people are surprised. I think people never thought to look for it, like myself. They never thought to look for it, and they never thought that this would still be um, not only a part of Utah constitution, but a part of the United States constitution. So tell me about the Utah Coalition to Abolish Slavery. How did the development of that organization come about? And what are you guys working towards? Sure. Th this coalition is a wonderful coalition of people who have come together, people and organizations who have come together who have said that we want to work towards getting this out of our constitution and we want to come up with a plan and strategize on how we can um, educate the public as to why this needs to come out of our constitution. Uh, tell me about your process for getting this on the ballot. Yes, so I presented a resolution um, in the st um, to the Utah State Legislators, um, HJR 8, and it passed overwhelmingly in the House and in the Senate, and it had to pass by two-thirds votes, and I uh, was able to pass this without one um, no vote. So it was unanimous, is it that correct? It was unanimous. Okay. Yes, We it just was. saw a clip of you um, back on that day when it passed, mm -hmm. and you were quite emotional. Tell me about this personal meaning to you. Yes, it, it is very personal to me. Um, over the last year, I have been um, had the opportunity to go out to different slave um, graves where um, they have not been marked. And we have a number of slaves in this state who have been buried, um, and there's no marker for them. And we're in the process of trying to find out who those individuals are and so we can know their stories and make sure that, that they're properly marked and recognized. And so this is very personal to me. This is very personal to me as a descendant of, of slaves, um, to be able to take this out of our Constitution and work towards taking it out of the Utah, I'm, I'm sorry, out of the U.S. Constitution. Right, so this is kind of like a pathway, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes. Um, since this is a constitutional amendment, the citizens of Utah need to pass it by a majority in order to prompt the change. Uh, likely it's going to pass, but is there a certain threshold that you're looking at? Like, for example, if it passes with 70% approval, is that going to cause some concern with you? You know, it's, it's not. It's not going to cause any concern with me. My concern is that it pass, that it gets out of, that is taken out of the Utah Constitution. Um, I would love to see 100%, you know, people vote in favor of this, but I know that that's not realistic with the climate that we're living in right now. And so as, if it pass, I will be, I will be ecstatic and I will be happy. Tell me about your guys' efforts right now with the, um, uh, the organization to abolish slavery. What are some of the things that you guys are doing right now? Are you guys going to work up, up until Election Day in November? Yes, we are going to work up to um, Election Day in November. Um, we're in the process, like I said, of educating the public about why this needs to be taken out of our Constitution, to talk about the history of why this was placed in our Constitution. And we're, like I said, we, we are connected to a national organization that is, that is working on, on this effort. Awesome. Um, while it is important to get this language removed from our Constitution, this is a 
significant year, right? It's a, a presidential year. It's an election year. Is there any sort of significance of that for you? It, it is. It's, it's very significant um, that we removed this from our language this year. Right now, we're in a nation and we're in a state that's greatly divided. We are very divided and, 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 and there are a lot of conflicts going on around racism and race issues right here in this state. And so for Republicans and Democrats to come together and say this is something we can work on together and we all agree that this needs to come out of our Constitution is huge. It's huge and, and we're having, it means that we're having that conversation around race. All right, I want you to just hold that thought. Uh, Representative Holland will have to take a quick break and we'll pick up on this conversation when we come back. Stay with us. It doesn't reflect who we are. Um, it doesn't reflect us as Utahns. It doesn't reflect us as Americans. Um, it's a part of a dark past, um, a dark past that many of us still don't want to hold conversation about. And, and, it, and it shouldn't be allowed in Utah Constitution and it shouldn't be in the American Constitution. That was Representative Sandra Hollins back in January 2019 talking about the verbiage about slavery that still exists in the state constitution. Before the break, Representative Hollins joined us live in the studio to talk about spearheading this effort and bringing it to voters two years later. We're going to pick up right where we left off. Yeah. And Sandra, two years, right, kind of flew by. Here we are now. The ballot measure is on voters' doorstep. What is it like for you to kind of be in this moment now, two years down the line? You know, it, it passed by very, very quickly. <laughs> it passed by very quickly. But to be in this moment, I think um, it's a historical moment. Um, in, in many ways, it's a historical moment. Um, this is a historical year. November will be a historical year. And so I think to have this on the ballot for me is, is, is great. It, it is really, really great. Um, it's something that we have been working towards for the last two years. It's something that has had the community, and particularly um, the African-American community, a buzz for the last two years. Um, and they have been looking forward to finally taking this out of our Constitution. What did you hear from your community, your constituents, your colleagues um, during the past two years as this was being addressed? I've heard a lot of positive um, feedback from my colleagues and from my constituents around this. A lot of them could not believe that this is still a part of our um, Constitution. Um, when I first decided um, to run this, um, this, this um, resolution, um, one of the things I did do, I was at the Capitol and I talked to the leadership at that time, um, the Republican leadership. And one of the things they immediately said to me was, we're on board, tell us what we need to do. We want to make sure this pass. And so they were immediately on board um, with, with this, with making sure that this passed and wanted, and that was the reason why, you know, I was, um, um, you know, that I chose or when Jake, um, Senator Jake Andrick contacted me and asked if he can be a part of this and if he can carry this on the Senate side, my, you know, my answer to him was absolutely yes. Yes, because we know we wanted this to be a bipartisan effort. How did last night's presidential debate make you feel about the need for this amendment to be on this year's ballot? It, it you know, watching the debate last night was, um, frustrating, it was disappointing, and it was scary. You know, when you have a president that call, pretty much called to action a white supremacist group, um, it, it's very scary, and, and all I saw was more of a divide in this nation and in this state. And so to have this initiative on the ballot, where people are able to come together and, ha and agree on something, um, I think is, is very good. Do you think that tackling this issue at the state level is the pathway to the national level? I think when you and I were talking during the break, you know, we don't have the exact numbers, but there's still several other states, right, mm -hmm. that still have this verbiage in their constitution. What do you hope still happens after if this ballot initiative passes in November? Yes, we are a part of a national movement that's going on, um, Abolish Slavery Network, that is going on nationally. And um, what they're doing is they're working 
towards removing this out of all of the state um, constitution with the end goal of removing it out of the 13th Amendment, moving it out of the Utah, uh, I'm sorry, out of the United States Constitution. And so um, right now we are working, um, Nebraska is also will have it on their ballot in November. And so uh, we've been working with them also to make sure that it passed. But I've also have had uh, people from Texas have reached out to me. A group from Texas have reached out to me and wanted to know um, what was my strategy? What did we do um, to remove it out of our constitution? Because they have felt that it's now, to, it's now time to move it out of their constitution. Do you see any next steps on this issue? Like for example, maybe prison work reform? You know, I'm always excited when we talk about um, prison reform um, because of my job as being a social worker and the population of individuals that I've worked with that has always been at the forefront. And so um, I think that this opens up the conversation on how do we make sure that those who number one, who have formerly incarcerated individuals have opportunities to work, support themselves and support their families once they are out of, um, once they are out of the system but also look at that system and how do we go about incarcer um, how do we go about reforming individuals and how do we go about um, making sure that um, th that they're educated and that they have the skills needed um, in the in the system to be able to support themselves and be productive members of society I would like to give you the last word what is your final message to voters as they engage in their civic duty and cast their ballot in November Sure. My, my message to them is number one, when you vote, vote down ballot. Make sure you vote all the way down ballot so you can vote on this amendment. And number two, if you're interested in getting more information, then you can go to um, Utah Abolish Slavery and they'll not only have information um, about what we're doing, but ways that you can get involved and support us. Representative Sandra Hollins, you've been with us since the beginning of this effort. Thank you so much for always joining us to continue this conversation, raising awareness and get more people aware about the situation. Thank you for having me.